All right. We're going to talk about arithmetic gradients here for just a second. So if you look in your book on pages 122 to the end of the chapter, basically, that's going to talk about gradients. So I want you to read that. I want you to read the lecture notes on gradients. And then I want you to look at the first page in your note, in, in the cover of your book, the bottom two sections. So far, so far we've gone over the top, um, the top six equations. Now we're going to look at this last set of equations called a gradient. So there's two types of gradients. There's an arithmetic gradient and there's a, uh, whoop, why isn't it drawing? There we go. There's an ar arithmetic gradient and then there's a geometric gradient. So now by definition, a gradient, which we're going to call uh, letter G stands for gradient, is the increase or decrease by an equal amount. So for something to start, okay, we'll just do one, two, three, four, five. So for something to increase at an equal amount, okay, we're going to want that to always a gradient to start at zero. So if our we're increasing by ten dollars per year, so there's ten, there's twenty, there's 30, there's 40, okay? So that gradient lasts for one, two, three, four, five years. And in this situation, the gradient is equal to 10, n is equal to five, okay? And you're probably like, well, what do you mean? Well, in order for it to increase equally, it has to start at zero. If we start at 50 and increase by 10, that's not going to be a gradient, right? So a lot of times you're never going to see this starting at zero. And if you look in the front of your book, right, it always starts at zero. Um, a lot of times what you're going to see is you're going to see, well, initially the company pays $500 for maintenance. And that's going to increase by $100 every year thereafter. 600 700 800 that's what you're going to see a lot of, okay? But we know by looking at this, by the definition, the gradient is an equal amount that increases or decreases by an equal amount. So what are these increasing by every year? Well, they're increasing by $100. And by definition, a gradient always needs to start at zero. So here's one, two, three, four. So if we look, this gradient is this red piece, right? And what does this green piece look like? Well, that green piece looks like a uniform series to me. So what we're going to do is when we have a gradient, we're going to do a two-part problem, okay? We're going to pull out an A and add to it the gradient. Because it's really, when you see something like this, it's two pieces. There's a uniform series and there's a gradient. So there's two things we can do for the gradient. And if you look in the front cover of your book, one thing we can do is we can turn that gradient into an A, okay? If we turn the gradient into an A, So one thing we can do is we can turn a gradient into a uniform series. And how we're going to do that is we're going to say A is equal to G times find an A given a G for an interest rate for the number of periods. Now note, our gradient starts at zero, the A, I'm sorry, a zero value at year one. That A is at year one. So for this formula, it would be 10 times a given g, let's say interest is 10%, 10% for five years. Well, we can go in the front of our book, in the back of our book under 10% column. Let me get there. That would be page 618. I'm looking at n is 5. I go over a given g 1.810. So let me find my pen here. 
there it is, equals 10 times 1.810, so $18.10. So having a gradient of an increase of $10 a year for five years, starting at zero, is equivalent to a uniform series of 1810. That's one of the things we can do. The other thing we can do, let's change colors here. Let's make it a big red. We can turn our gradient into a P. Now notice the P, like all other P's, is one, year, one period before the first event of the series. Is it the F or the A or whatever? It's one period before. So in this situation, P is going to equal G times find a P given a G I N, which would be 10 times find a P given a G, 10%, again, five years. The gradient always starts with a value of zero. P given G, 10, five, I dropped my page. Let me go back. P given G for five is 6.862. 6862 $68.62. $68 so I would have to put in the bank $68.62, let it sit in there, not do anything the first year. The second year, take 10 out, take 20 out, take 30 out. The last year, I could take 40 out. That's the, that's the value. So there, that is how we do gradients, arithmetic gradients. Two-parters, so for this guy here, okay, for this problem, if I wanted to find a P, it would be, uh, I'll change my colors here so it all matches up nice for you. Okay, it would be A times find a P given an A I4. So that would plus, I'm going to do just keep doing that. Let's see. Equals, that would be my A here is 500 times P given A, we'll call it 10% 4. So let's go look at 10% 4. I should just leave my book open at 10%. Okay, P given A, 10, 4 is 3.170. 3.170. So we can take 500 times 3.170. Fifteen eighty-five. I keep losing my pen. Fifteen eighty-five. That takes into account the uniform series. Okay. Now I've got to add to it my gradient times p given g i four. Well, we know the gradient value is a hundred bucks. P given G, 10, 4. I kept my book open. P given G, 10, 4 is uh, 4.378. 4.378. So that would be plus 4.3780. I do my math. And I get 2,022.80. That's the present value of that guy. So I would have to put in $2,022.80 to take out 500 the first year, 600 the next year, 700 and 800. So it's two pieces. Okay. If I wanted to turn it into an A, oh, that would be really easy, right? I would just say A is equal to 500, because that's already an A, plus 100, A given G, 10, 4. And I would have my A. So we will work on that. And then there's also something called a geometric gradient. And uh, that is located on the upper right-hand corner. The only thing you do with that is bring it back to a P, and you just use 
two cases when the interest rate is equal to the gradient rate or the interest rate is not equal to the gradient rate. All right, I will see you in class.